All right, so the next section is how does precipitation show up on a GFA? For example, you'll notice in the top section, we have dashed green lines for the border. And in the bottom example, we have a solid green line. The dash green line is known as showery precipitation or intermittent precipitation. So the way I think of it is because it's choppy, showery, we have a choppy line. And when it's continuous precipitation, we have a continuous green line. Showery precipitation, that's associated with unstable air and continuous precipitation is associated with stable air. All right, the next has to do with the freezing precipitation. And it says between three to six statute miles in light freezing rain and mist. The next is the obstructions to visibility such as haze or fog. And in that area, you have four statute miles of haze. All right, so this next section is actually quite important and it's a common question on a lot of exams. They'll ask you, what does it mean when you say isolated, occasional, or frequent. That has to do with the convective clouds. In other words, showery precipitation. Isolated means when that cloud group is 25% or less. Occasional is between 26 to 50%, and frequent is when you see greater than 50%. The next is non-convective clouds, where you can anticipate continuous precipitation, low strata ceilings, icing, turbulence, and restrictions to visibility. So in this case, we have three designators again. For 25% or less, we call it local. 50%, we call it patchy clouds, and Greater than 50% and we call it extensive clouds. All right, in the next part, we're gonna look at the lines of equal pressure known as the isobars. These lines join points of equal mean sea level pressure and are depicted on the GFA clouds and weather chart only. Isobars are drawn at four hectopascal intervals. This next image depicts the freezing level. You can tell it looks very similar to the isobars, except that the lines for the freezing level are actually dashed lines. So it's important when you look at the chart, you look for dashed lines for freezing level and solid lines for isobars. The freezing level contours are indicated by dashed lines. The height of the freezing level is indicated every 2,500 feet ASL. So for example, in this picture, we have the surface, 2,500 feet and 5,000 feet depicted. Now in the above example, it shows we have an above freezing layer between 3,000 feet to 5,000 feet within the enclosed area. All right, the next section is the surface winds. The speed and direction of forecast winds are depicted when they have a sustained speed of at least 20 knots. Wind gusts are indicated by the letter G, followed by the peak gust speed in knots. In the above example, the surface winds is forecast to be from west so that's 270 degrees true, with a speed of 25 knots gusting to 35 knots. Icing. It is depicted in blue and only indicated whenever moderate or severe icing is forecast. The type of icing can either be rime, mixed, or clear. In this example, an area of moderate mixed icing from 2,000 feet to 13,000 feet above sea level is indicated as follows. In the next symbol, we have three lines and that is severe icing. That is from the freezing level up to 14,000 feet with rime ice. And in the outer circle, we have moderate rime icing from the freezing level to 16,000 feet. Turbulence is depicted in red and indicates whenever moderate or severe turbulence is forecast for the coverage area. The cause of turbulence will be included whenever you have mechanical turbulence, low level wind shear, lee mountain waves, a significant low level jet, or clear air turbulence. In this example, you can see turbulence is depicted as a red line and it says an area of moderate clear air turbulence based at 18,000 feet above sea level with a top at 26,000 feet above sea level. The next example, we have two areas of different turbulence intensities. In the middle circle, we have severe mechanical turbulence from the surface to 3,000 feet above ground, as well as in the outer area, we have moderate mechanical turbulence from the surface to 4,000 feet above ground level. And the final area, we have again a mixed area of turbulence. One is based on moderate clear air turbulence from 22,000 up to 32,000 feet. And the other area, moderate mechanical turbulence from the surface to 3,000 feet above ground level. So one of the reasons for the low level turbulence is due to a low level jet. A low level jet is included when it's expected to have a peak core speed of 50 knots or greater. Low-level jets are not usually included if they are above 6,000 feet above sea level. This is an example of a low-level jet. You can see that the jet is moving northeast bound and it has a speed of 60 knots. 
In second example, we can see a low level jet moving southwest and it says it's at 45 knots producing moderate turbulence from the surface to 4,000 feet above ground level. So normally the jet streams are much higher in altitudes, but when it's a low level jet like this, especially if it's overflowing atop of a mountain range peak, or if it's blowing over a lot of trees, it's gonna create additional turbulence for you when you're flying low level. Something to be aware of. Some common GFA terms you'll see on the GFA are CIG, which stands for IFR conditions caused by low ceilings. LCA means local. The next one means over Southern Ontario. This one means onshore, upslope, James Bay, Hudson's Bay, coastal mountains. So a common phrase you might see is local ceilings are forecast because of an onshore and upslope northwesterly flow of air from James Bay and Hudson's Bay. Now I have to admit, <laughs> Nav Canada uses these terms assuming you <laughs> know your geography. Uh, James Bay and Hudson's Bay, I'll put it on the map right here so you can see where they're located. And you must have a basic understanding of where these are located on the map.